Alrighty, folks. Happy spring, and welcome to another Illinois Valley Community Broadcast. Remember, uh, if you'd like anything included in these broadcasts, uh, feel free to get in touch with me and uh, leave a comment on my YouTube videos, and we'll get in touch. Um, and we'll get your information out there. Uh, don't forget that there is a community telegram group for folks interested in using this time as an opportunity to discuss um, how the folks within the Illinois Valley may kind of organize and draw down their fossil fuel consumption. So there's in the long term. And, you know, we do have a, a kind of short to medium term opportunity uh, here before us where we're all kind of forced to draw down our fossil fuel consumption. But many of us have actually been working on this for a long time. And And uh, so, yeah, so if you're interested in having those types of discussions in a, a group setting online so that once travel restrictions become kind of lifted, we can get organized and energized within our community and kind of continue to draw down our fossil fuel consumption. So with that, I'll kind of just go over uh, some of the posts or news from some of the Oregon and Illinois Valley, Josephine County, Facebook and Twitter feeds. I'll also share just the kind of quick update on what the president Trump went over in the task force press conference um today and yeah let's get started and remember you can always subscribe to my youtube channel please hit the thumbs up button or thumbs down button <laughs> all right um so essentially uh there was, you know, um, not really new news within some of the Facebook and Twitter feeds today, but there was still a lot of activity from people kind of uh, sharing their experiences and some of the emotions that they're going through. Um, and, you know, sharing some of the adjustments that folks are making in their lives and sharing some really good resources that they're using uh, to help with some of these adjustments. And remember, all these links are in the description of the YouTube video. Um, so, you know, there's just uh, lots of people are sharing inspirational posts. People are also sharing posts about needs that they may have um, or might anticipate you know some people have too much toilet paper and so they're willing to share that um, but there was um, a few updates the CJ laundry mat is still open far as I can tell um, however there may be some procedures around the showers or whatever um, should actually be a really good place to get rid of, rid, rid of the flu, the virus. Um, and the school board, there was also a post from the school board about potentially um, suspending testing this, this year. Uh, they still really aren't sure how things are going to adjust, but they're definitely trying to figure that out. So... If you have children in school, make sure to, 
you know, just kind of listen in on some of their communications. I'm sure they're sending emails out to all the parents. There are, you know, no surprise, folks looking for work in Josephine County and also folks uh, that are actually hiring for some things. And so there are quite a bit of useful information in some of these, you know, job boards. Uh, it's no surprise that some of the, you know, jobs or offers are going to be in the, the medical field here. Um, so that's you know, going on in the county, I believe statewide, there was, you know, essentially over 25, you know, now there's over 4,000 unemployment claims in the, uh, in the state. Um, Yeah. Um, folks are also figuring out ways to distribute food from some of the schools and through different areas, you know, within the county and different neighborhoods. So it's kind of interesting to see how some of this information is coming, um, coming into these groups and see like what uh, community groups are getting involved. Um, so that's a pretty cool thing. The, uh, and there's only like two Illinois Valley, Southern Oregon Facebook groups, or actually there's less than like half a dozen. So fairly easy to keep track of. Some of the things that did happen within the county, um, coming from these groups are uh, that the Jackson and Josephine County did finally declare yesterday a state of emergency. So it'll be interesting to kind of see how that plays out. So they now have the executive kind of authority to make decisions or, you know, discuss decisions that, normally, you know, wouldn't kind of be options. Um, the OregonLaws.org website has um, a kind of description or whatever of what the law is that and what gets put into effect when there is a declaration of state of emergency by a city or a county. So it kind of goes through the procedures, you know, mandatory evacuations. Of course, we're not going to be evacuating. Um, so if you're interested in that kind of thing or want to keep tabs on that, you'll find a link to these websites in the description. And the Oregon State Legislature is also you know, figuring out what kind of housing protections to put in place for folks uh, and for for businesses, obviously. So good link to a website to stay informed about that. And one of the other, you know, one of the not so good things that I came across today is that the federal regulators actually approved yesterday, right? So all this is going on and they still got enough time to, you know, sneak in and try to force what's essentially a bailout for these natural gas companies, in particular, the one trying to uh, create the Jordan Cove pipeline um, and Coos Bay facility. And this is something that folks really need to pay attention to. A lot of these corporations that are getting bailouts right now are not businesses that were in healthy long-term positions, either economically or financially or culturally or socially. And 
the establishment ruling class is going to try to still keep that system in place. So it's something that we have to be vigilant for and thankful for the fact that whether you like Governor Kate Brown or not, she has, or whether she's held up to all of her pledges or not, uh, that she has pledged, the state has pledged a denial to deny some of the permits that the Jordan Cove pipeline project would need. So there's a very clear, um, you know, this is just one of the examples of Oregon being able to kind of exercise its own self governance over the federal government and dissolving the parent child relationship or doctrine between the federal government and the state government. And of course, it's not until a state dissolves this relationship that it can actually have any kind of autonomy to take on or at projects that we're going to need in the future and to resist some of the, the pushback and efforts by the federal government to keep large corporations kind of still in control um, under the current way that you know we have our society kind of designed. So this is one of the reasons why I, you know, staying in Oregon. Um, I'm not going to put up with that. Also, there's been adjustments <clears throat> through some of the food bank schedules, and I'm assuming processes and stuff that they're going through. I'll probably be going to one of the food banks in a few days. So, you know, I'll get an opportunity then to kind of see what's going on outside outside the mountains here. But if, you know, a food bank is something that you depend on or might need to depend on in, in the near future, uh, they do have a Facebook page and they do post and they are easy to get in touch with. And they usually have items that store well too for periods of time. <clears throat> in kind of Cascadian bioregional news, uh, there's not really a whole lot of information out of Facebook as far as any kind of watershed response to being able to support communities. Uh, people, of course, are doing so in their kind of normal city-state way. But there was a cool uh, documentary reposted. Uh, it's a few years old, but the documentary folks have, and I'm not sure how long they have had it, but it's you're able to stream it for free now. So it's kind of interesting to watch some of these videos that are four and five years old, and they're telling us things that many of us already knew 10, 15, 20 years ago or more. So always nice to revisit these movies to see uh, you know, what kind of path and trajectory we're actually on so that we can better prepare to, to support and build nourishing communities. Right, so there you go. Put a link to the film in the description so you don't have to actually go to Facebook to, to watch it. And interesting thing in the Twitter sphere so, not really a whole lot of local or city news coming out of the Twitter, Twitter space. I really don't look at much of the, the space in you know, central southern Oregon, but I do check out what's coming, what's, I guess, being tagged statewide. And of course, most of that is going to come out of Portland area. And of course, we know businesses are highly affected right now. 
So it's been kind of interesting to see, you know, who is posting on Twitter in the business community right now. And I came across uh, Biz for a Better PDX, and it seems like a pretty interesting uh, coalition of folks, but essentially they did a kind of a study or interview across the state and they got some interesting statistics and I saw another post from Built Oregon. <clears throat> so I decided to check them out and see who they are and everything. But essentially, uh, this is their, you know, on their study, they kind of show some of the groups they're working with. And, you know, these are essentially a business group for, you know, marginalized communities. Um, and, you know, what looks like to be small local businesses. So one of the, the projects or collaborators with that is the Portland incubator experiment, which is pretty neat. Uh, they're actually doing a lot of demos. I don't know if this was something they were doing a whole lot before the CV. Looks like it was, but you know their demos kind of feature different business or economic projects within their community and the marginalized communities, you know, in that area. It seems like, uh, you know, they may, they also have a conference every year. But so I'll be keeping tabs, be keeping tabs of these folks, see what they got going on. Um, some pretty interesting projects there. And lastly, uh, you know, lots of folks are wondering what to do with their kids. How do I spend time with my kids now? And, you know, some, some found this, came across this link from OregonKid.com. It essentially taught, gives some information on, you know, doing yoga with kids, doing it together as a family. And I did see in one of the groups in the Illinois Valley a while back that there are some yoga practitioners offering, you know, online services. So something that, uh, you know, is a, a local, a local part of our culture here in the Valley. So more information on that's always good. And I think most importantly, you know, Get outside with your kids, start taking on some garden projects, check up on your neighbors. Um, a couple of things that came out of the presidential um, task force update today is, of course, that there's been a two month suspension on student loan interest. The tax day that's normally April 15th has also been pushed back to July 15th. Um, Trump also <laughs> called out kind of some of the stupid questions and behavior of some of the reporters, which I mean, for the most part, they don't let in really smart <laughs> reporters, right? So uh, it's kind of funny agreeing with them sometimes. Um, it was also, I watched, listened to the, the governor's meeting with the task force yesterday, and it did seem that, you know, there's kind of been some struggle in this new market that's been created for 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 getting medical supplies and whatnot. Um, not sure, you know, how much of this is due to U.S. capacity not being able to just kind of organize and get things put together, 
or I'm sure there's actually like international uh, supply and capacity that's kind of diminished and creating a lot of unknowns for folks. But it's going to be interesting to see over the next week uh, or two, you know, how well is our, you know, is the government actually able to, you know, start getting the medical supplies that we need. Um, because everybody on the planet is needing them right now, pretty much. That being said, Trump did have an interesting statement that General Motors or Ford, that the car companies had reached out to him, and actually, it was Tesla, um, New York, somebody in New York reached out to Elon Musk over Twitter. Twitter, uh, Elon Musk responded back. Next thing you know, some other people in New York City were talking and essentially Tesla was like, yeah, our HVAC systems are completely capable for this. Our air filtration systems that are part of the SpaceX program, you know, they have the technology, they have the know-how, they have automatable or highly automated gigafactories. And so I've been trying to keep an eye on that news because it's just an obey. Uh, the, the factories, the gigafactory and the factories that they have in China that are robotic, heavily robotic, are just more agile than the infrastructure that we have in, here in the U.S. because all the manufacturing companies in the U.S., they they updated all their stuff when they put up a plant in another country. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with automobile companies. Of course, we know there needs to be like an 80% reduction in fossil fuel consumption in the next 10 years. So that means 80% less driving, 80% less cars, planes, you know, so very all very interesting stuff i do like following what's going on with tesla and spacex and i i hope some of this information has been helpful if there's information you'd specifically like to see or a platform you'd particularly like me to monitor just let me know or help in the effort and let's keep in touch illinois valley